Okay, I'm delighted to say that I have on the line Dr. Luke Evans, who is the Conservative MP for Bosworth. Now, Dr. Luke Ev uh, Evans has opposed this bill um, to call, calling for a warning to be added to photoshopped images of bodies. Dr. Luke Evans, we are delighted to welcome you to the Voice of Islam radio. Welcome to The Breakfast Show. It's an honour to have you on. And thank you for joining us for this pre-recording for tomorrow. Not at all. It's lovely to be here and speak to you on such an important topic. <laughs> indeed, indeed. And, look, you know, um, talking about the importance of, of the topic, what is it that inspired you to propose the bill? And what are you aiming to achieve through the bill? Because it, it, there does appear to be some mis understanding developing in the media around it? Yes, yeah, so the basic premise of the, the bill that I want to propose is that for advertisers, broadcasters and publishers, where someone uh, alters their body image, let's say they make uh, a woman's waist slimmer or a man's biceps bigger, they're entitled to do so, but it should carry a digital label. Now, we already have product placement when you watch something on TV in the UK, and I'd like to see the similar done um, on uh, the particularly uh, doctored images because I'm worried about the negative impact it has, particularly on the younger generation, because it creates this um, aspiration that uh, you can never achieve, and we're creating a warped sense of the world, which I think is very worrying. And through my clinical uh, career as a GP, I've seen people come in, and this is part and contributing to the fact that they're trying to aspire to something that they'll never be able to achieve, no matter how, what diet they went on, no matter how much they went to the gym. And that's a real concern for me. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is so many different topics that we've tackled over the last... Um, that over the last, you know, six months and a year, talking about mental health of young people, and and this aspect does keep coming up again and again, that they that it's almost like being they're being told what they need to look like, and that's um, causing a lot of mental health challenges. I think you're right because the, the social media generation do spend a lot of time looking at images and the sheer scale of image, uh, the number of images you can look at. Is, is incredible. Um, the downside is that can be used in a negative way or reinforce negative perception. So if someone's uh, uh, worried about the fact that they might feel they're overweight, for example, if they're constantly looking at images that uh, purport to have very slim uh, men or women in, uh, portrayed in a certain way, it leads us to this anxiety and uh, uh, unfulfilledness that people have. And that can, at its worst cases, manifest as eating disorders or often in men, it actually uh, can uh, lead to things like steroid abuse, which we've seen in the UK go up. Um, about one million people are reported to be using illegal steroids to try and bulk up in the gym. And 1.5 million people uh, suffer with eating disorders, anorexia and bulimia. So, it, you know, it's a significant problem in the UK um, and across the world actually and, and, and needs tackling and nations across the, uh, the, the globe are, uh, are waking up to this and Norway is probably the furthest. They recently started to say that they're going to look at putting in uh, labelling um, the closest thing to what I'm proposing. So there is a, a momentum behind this. It's a matter of just getting all the, the ducks in a row to get it sorted out. Mm -hmm. And we've seen, you know, um, responsibility being inferred um, that should apply to to the social media companies. Um, we've seen it when it comes to um, race, you know, online racist abuse. You know, um, uh, and now we're seeing it with here as well. What what exactly are you proposing that the social media companies can do to work with government to to it, to, to, to sort this issue really? Help. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. So there's two parts to that. One is the specifics of, of my bill, um, which is uh, written in a very small way as an add-on, basically, because what it's saying is uh, if you enhanced one of the areas of an image, um, then you, you'd have to label it. Now, actually, in terms of the real world, what that means for social media users is um, – there's already a way that the social media companies distinguish between those people using it for commercial gain and those people using it um, just to you know, touch up their wedding photo, for example, because they don't like the way uh, their skin looks on it. So I'm not trying to target you from touching up your holiday photo. What I'm wanting to do is make sure that on the wide scale that have large followings, we're not driving this perception that you should be some way that you can never achieve. And so that's one aspect. The second aspect is you rightly picked out 
um, is leading to uh, the, the bullying that you see, the racist uh, abuse that you see online, and part of the government's looking with the online harms bill that's being brought forward before Christmas to try and address this, to put a burden of responsibility more on the social media companies to do more about taking this down. We've also got to remember we can educate people about um, what is acceptable. We often wouldn't accept that out in the street or, uh, you know, in your pub or a restaurant to call people out like that. Yet we allow that to happen uh, in, in the digital form. And we can't do that. There, there has to be um, some, uh, some repercussions and responsibility put on the social media companies to do more to take this down as quickly as possible. After all, they are the place that is hosting it. Uh, we wouldn't allow... Uh, a rowdy pub uh, full of racist uh, abuse to, to continue. It would be reported, the police will get onto it. I don't think it should be acceptable uh, online. Dr. Evans, is something that you said earlier, um, especially, you know, experience as a GP, that I just wanted to just explore a little bit. There's a fine line here, isn't there, between young people, and I know this isn't just about young people, but there's a fine line here between young people um, not wanting to be bullied um, or receive hate online when they post unfiltered pictures of themselves that they feel would lead, um, and them feeling confident or more confident when they post slightly doctored um, pictures of themselves on the on the on online, and they receive that kind of positive uh, affirmation that they're looking for online. They receive that. Um, recognition. Um, they yes. receive those likes. There's, there's a there's a balance between benefit and harm. And, and I'm I really interested to, to get your view on that. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And the way I would address this is, in essence, this is um, it, if you. I, when I explain to people what there's the health aspect that we've mainly concentrated on, but if you turn this into an advertising problem, if you went to mm. rent a house uh, or rent a room in a house or buy a house, um, it's absolutely fine for the photos to you know, have good lighting, the walls be painted, nice throws put out. But what you fundamentally couldn't do is make the garden look bigger or the bedroom higher mm. or the mm. kitchen wider. That's the difference for me because this doesn't exist in the real world and that's what I'm trying to target because human nature has always been um, wanting to look better to improve the way we look. It gives us confidence and we know that that makes a big difference. But it's starting to create a, a situation where you can't ever get to that or achieve it no matter what you went from. And that's the when that's we all like to wear smart clothes. We like to present ourselves in a certain way to send a message to the world. That's good for body positivity. But what we don't want to do is get into there where it's an absolute necessity that you cannot cope in the world that you live in without having to do some form of alteration. And I guess that's the big concern that I have. Mm. Dr. Luke Evans, it's been absolutely wonderful having you on the show. I must make a small correct correction. I said this was for the breakfast show. I've got myself. This was a pre-recording for the drive time show. I'll never hear the end of it if that makes it live <laughs> on air. <laughs> but it's been absolutely wonderful. And I really, really appreciate you making, taking time out of your busy schedule. For it's the been a pleasure to speak to you. And, and thank you for having me on your